thought I'd make a bit of a different video today. Show you a few of the vehicles we've got down at the other yard. Starting with the Centurion Barv. This is actually my favourite vehicle out of all the things we've got. I've got to take the start motor off it today. You coming, Ted? You coming? You coming? Oh, good boy. Bit of an unusual vehicle this, it's like half tank, half boat. Uh, very handy at shows, you can see there's my camp bed. I like to use this as a bit of a camper van at shows, plenty of room in here. There's the starter motor, the offending article that I'm going to take off in a minute there. They're a bit weak on these. Um, here's the driver's area. I'll turn the isolator on, turn the interior lights on. Oh, the ignition's still on, turn that off. Yeah, there's the bulletproof window. Mark 13 Centurion outside, there's a gear pattern. There's a data plate that actually says Centurion Tank Beach Armoured Recovery. And people are going, it's not a tank. Well, it says on there it is. Right, I've got to take this kidney plate off. Uh, the engine is behind this uh, door, I'll show you inside the engine bay. There's the engine, Rolls Royce. 27 litre V12 Meteor engine, same as normal Centurion, just slightly different configuration. I actually bought this vehicle from my old boss. Um, originally I was a farmer's son, but I uh, used to do some work at a local farm um, where they did tank driving, called Armageddon. Um, and obviously the boss of the place, Stuart Garner, got on with him very well. I knew nothing at all about tanks. Uh, he took me on as a mechanic. Obviously, I'd been learning how to mend tractors my entire life with Dad because he'd never pay to get stuff mended, so I'd be mending it myself, or we'd be mending it ourselves because we couldn't afford to get it repaired at, at tractor dealership. So I grew up learning all about mechanics with the old man. And then, obviously, when we went off doing mowing and bailing over at Stuart's place, I'd see all these tanks it got, and I thought they were fascinating. I'm not from the Army. I've never been in the Army. Um, not really into killing or any of that nonsense. I just like the vehicles and the mechanics behind them. So um, it wasn't long. I think I was probably about 15 or 16. Well, I had a word with Stuart one day when we were there bailing, and I said, you know, would you uh, would you take me on as a mechanic? And he did. I had a little meeting with him um, a couple of days later. Sat down in his office, and he said, all right, your first job, Joe, I'd like you to get the engine um out of this Centurion tank and we'll we'll find a new one for it and, re and get it going. Obviously I had no idea what a Centurion tank was, um, but I said, yeah, yeah, well, that sounds good to me, we'll get on with that. Uh, and when I walked out of his office, I went on Google and typed in Centurion tank and I wandered around the yard until I realised which vehicle we were on about and I was uh, a bit worried when I saw how big it was. Um, I'd never done anything like that in my life. Worked on tractors, but that's one thing, but a Centurion tank was certainly another. But I pretended that I wasn't phased by it. And uh, in the next couple of weeks or so, I got in, took the clutch out, got the engine out. We then went on eBay. I found another engine, um, actually a new one in a crate. This is years ago now. And we brought it back, got it going, got it running, um, drove it around, which was a major achievement for me. Um, you know, I got a lot of job satisfaction out of that. Um, and obviously Stuart drove it for the first time in years. It had been sat at his place as a bit of a static display for customers to look at for quite some time. And then later that same year, we took it into his workshop and uh, the team all, you know, needle gunned it, painted it, made it look nice. And we took it to a local show, Wicksteed at War, uh, that same year and it won Best in Show. So that was a, a real big moment for me, really enjoyed it. And pretty much since then, I got the bug for uh, for fixing up these old things, and 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 that's how it all started in a lot of ways. 
But anyway, that's got that starter motor off. Unfortunately, um, the starters on these are incredibly weak. I, I've probably put three on this now in the time I've had it. Um, they tend to backfire occasionally on startup, which nearly always results in them smashing themselves to bits. Anyway, this is the other door into the gearbox room. I'll just move the torch here. So this is where your uh, radiators are, and underneath there is your gearbox. It's quite cool that the, the barf has individual rooms for the, like, the gearbox room, engine room, and then obviously the main compartment. Feels a little bit like the old Titanic in some ways. I will be taking it to our local show, which is called Operation Market Harbour. I'll leave a banner at the end of the video so you know where it is. Um, there were only ever 12 of these ever built. We we're fortunate enough to have one of them. I think there's only about five left, and I'm pretty sure this is one of the only uh, five that actually still run and drive. I think Bobbington's got a real nice example that does run and drive, uh, and uh, two, two other friends of mine have, have got them. Um, but I'm pretty sure that this one and Bobbington are the only ones that you could just get in straight away and start up and use. So, a very unusual vehicle that you probably won't see in many other places. We've also got a Centurion Avery here, 105, and a very nice Mark V Chieftain tank, which I may as well show you a little bit of while we're here. This one's in super condition. Real nice bit of kit this is. I'll, uh, I'll get a bit of a better shot from uh, from the front in a moment and we'll have a little climb and a little look through them. This is our Mark 13 Centurion gun tank. It's another major project of uh, ours that we've got to do at some stage. A lot needs doing on this, but I've always liked Centurion since obviously working at Armageddon. Really got me in the mood for Centurion, so finally we managed to get our hands on our own. As you can see, this is in need of a full restoration, but it is very complete, and I'm very pleased with this vehicle. Um, so hopefully, in the near future, when I'm not so busy with everything else, we can get on to this old girl. While we're here, we'll have a little climb about and uh, have a little look on all the other ones that are in this shed, hidden away in the dry. There's the uh, only vision through the barb. Right, this, this vehicle here, I actually call it Mad Max. It's because it looks like it's absolutely knackered, but actually it runs and drives fantastic. Even the turret all works electronically, which is a bit of a miracle. This vehicle actually got off, uh, offered to me on Instagram uh, for a friend, uh, and the chap that, had, that actually owned it had uh, got cancer, a real nice bloke, uh, and sadly he, he decided that he needed to get rid of it. He was never going to get it going. It didn't have an engine in it uh, when we got it, and this this chap um, decided that he wanted to get rid of it. So he was friends with the lad on Instagram that messaged me, um, and then obviously I got in touch with the chap. Went down, um, we we bought the vehicle uh, off him as a non-runner. Crouch has recovered it for us last year, uh, and me and the team got the engine in it, running and driving. And I promised Steve, the chap that owned it um, before me, that. I'd get his tank going and he could he could drive it uh, you know for the first time you know I made him that promise and we uh, we did get the engine going and we got it driving around and last year we took it to uh, to the local show and I invited Steve to come and drive his tank for the first time and uh, it, it really made his day real nice chap and it was nice that he managed to drive it um, before it was all too late I think we're all guilty in life of having so many projects and a lot of us never actually get in time to get around to do it and unfortunately life catches up with you in the end and a lot of these things that you wanted to do never happen so you need to be aware of that and you know I, I've got so many projects on I always want, often wonder if I'm ever going to finish any of them. Anyway I'll jump outside and I'll show you the engine bay in this one. It's 
So I actually managed to get an engine for this from our friends at Track and Wheel, um, from Tom and Tobin. Tobin Jones, very nice people to deal with. A very nice engine, actually. Wasn't any trouble at all, got that in. Ran no problem at all. Uh -huh. Moving on to the Mark V Chieftain Tank. This is another nice vehicle, really. Very nice uh, bit of kit. This is actually going off to, a, to America soon. It's another, another job we've got to sort out. Um, it's really nice inside for one of these. Obviously, you've got to remember these, these vehicles are 1960. And this has been a Mark V. It's quite an early, early example of a Chieftain. So it's quite impressive to see how tidy it is, considering how old it is. This is definitely my favourite uh, seat in the tank, the commander's seat. This 360 vision through the periscopes at the top, you literally feel indestructible when you sat in there. It's very, very tidy in here. There's obviously the main 120mm gun, all your ammo rack and bits and pieces for your shells and your rounds. There's your metadyne, what makes the gun all stabilise. It's all complete. Bag charge bins. Just a nice early example in pretty... Pretty good condition, very tidy. Take a little look inside the driver's compartment again. Very tidy, very clean, nice and complete. You can eat your dinner off this thing. Lovely, comfortable seat. Yeah, it's nice to see one in good condition because most of the ones I'm used to seeing are absolutely knackers that have been left outside for years and years and years and ruined. Anyway, thank you all for watching and we'll see you again in the next video. What do you think it's bath time? Hey. Okay. Because I go in the pond every day, so this is... Yeah, you'd think it'd like water and batting because it does like... Oh! Oh! oh. Like that, bit so that wasn't so good, was it? Tasty. Tasty water. Let's get some shampoo in his eyes. It's a banana facial. Is it?